yeah, that's also why I I'm still working out like now during the off season to kind of work on my on my weak points, especially yeah. the knees. You mentioned um, um, the kind of strength and conditioning stuff. Could we maybe look at that a little bit? What does strength and conditioning and a typical training week look like for you? I imagine it must be different sort of on-season versus off-season, kind of like you mentioned how you're in a bit of an off-season now. So for you to improve, what does your training look like? So at the moment, um, we have a lot of volume. We are like, like today I did a... We have a Polish strength and conditioning coach, like he calls it Tabata. Oh we yeah, Tabata. Like a, yeah. like a circle kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, where we do like for 20, 20 seconds work, ten seconds off, and then yeah. eight rounds of eight exercises. That's hard, man. Tabata that, that was is really hard. hard. I just finished yeah. it, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little exhausted, but no, it's fine. <laughs> and then you have that once a week um actually maybe twice a week because maybe i have it, the same one tomorrow he sends me the plan now he's yeah, yeah. still on poland so he's sending all the players the plans yeah. and then the first day of the of like the the monday kind of workout plan is at the moment is only a leg day like a classic um eccentric three seconds um like all kinds of exercises for like classic leg day. And do you use Between machines and stuff or is it mostly free weight or? It's mostly free weights. Yeah. Um, it's actually only free weights now that I think about it. Yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. Like eight repetitions, four to four or five sets, three seconds eccentric. Like squats are not high, high loads. Like, like we progress, like now I started from maybe like 70 up to 90 kilos. Like I move up every set. Because at the moment it's only important, I would say, or I think um, that's what their idea is to to be careful with the joints, to build them up, to also not um, make the knees worse than they were already. Um, yeah. Because during this season we will move up more into like explosive workouts, a full body workouts. Um, because at the moment it's split between leg day and upper day upper body leg but they we don't have like push up push and uh, pull days yeah it's more leg and upper body split um upper body is the same eccentric at the moment and then during the seasons we have like cycles between yeah like the same we we have phases it depends like the most important part of the seasons for example now and during the playoffs we were doing like three to four reps yeah like high loads um, trying to keep it, uh, try to stay explosive. We had like, we were combining it with like medicine, ball throws and, and jumps. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, without having the plan in front of me, it's like yeah. not easy to explain. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would say, uh, yeah. And then like during the main round, sorry, I'm in Berlin. There's always a little <laughs> stuff going on outside. That's right. That's um, right. <laughs> Yeah, and then during the seasons, like I said, we have cycles where we move up to like eight or maybe even ten reps. We always have like a core uh, three to four exercises that we do most of the time, and then we have like um, alternated. We call it like prevention work for, yeah. with a lot of like knees over toes exercises. I don't know if you've heard of that. So, Probably yeah. you did. So, so it's kind of like mobility type work. Yeah, it's like mobility um, and like always three to four exercises also individual because yeah. first of all we have different positions in volleyball like the libero is not going to do the same exercises as me because i have to jump all the time he, yeah. the libero he has need to, to quick on his feet and uh, yeah and move move fast and um so yeah and then yeah individual like if you have shoulder problems you're going to have two to three exercises that focus on your on your on your shoulder and, yeah true uh, with bands do do you do much um, plyometric jumping type work or do you already get enough jumping stuff in your trainings and your no, games? We, you... we combine it. We combine it for sure. Um, we for sure jump everything during volleyball practice. Um, but there are times, especially in the beginning of the season, where we will say, okay, now during the weight sessions, we're going to like, we, we're going to really push during the weight training. And then forget a little bit about the about the jumping in the afternoon. That's not the most important. So we will have like squats, and then we will follow up directly with uh, plyometrics, yeah, yeah. and um, and jumps. Um, yeah, man, it sounds like you do quite a variety of stuff. Yeah, and it's also how... it also depends because 
in every club you have a different strength and conditioning coach they all okay. have and like different, different ideas approaches. how they work different philosophies yeah. some guys really like to do high volume other guys really like to do like supersets i don't know it's yeah. really everyone's working differently some guys have the sensors on that they put on the on the bar to measure the speed or the velocity and then they yeah. kind of make you like try to beat yourself and Get and the, the other guys in your position like now in france i was um because I was playing in Toulouse, there's a really famous Stade Toulousain, the rugby club. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they we were doing a weight session together with them. And then ob ob obviously we were like, we had the, the sensor also on. Yeah. And we tried to like find an exercise that was um, where we could kind of compare each other because it was clear that like some exercises that would absolutely dis demolish yeah, us but like so for example we had we were measuring like the jump heights and stuff and then we were much much stronger yeah yeah but yeah that was fun to to see um how also like different sports work differently and then they actually invited us because they have different situations during the game where they kind of need need to jump higher and um, yeah. not a rugby expert but like but when they try to lift each other up yeah, try yeah. to help the two guys on the bottom and like yeah. make the actual guy jump instead of just lifting him up yeah so they were like looking at our footwork before when we jump and and that kind of stuff so we were yeah it's always interesting to see like the different disciplines yeah that's and then cool, you had man. our two like their strength and conditioning guy work or speak with our guy and then the the weeks after we had a couple of new exercises also as well so yeah. it's different to say or it's hard to say how everyone is working because everyone is working differently like mm. now during the during the winter during with my club season i'm gonna do completely different um um weightlifting than what i will do now during the summer in the next couple of months which is also yeah, why now i'm really yeah. sore because i'm doing the different plans of the different guy <laughs> yeah. and um yeah and i'm coming from the phase where i'm like doing three or four reps at the, at the most. And now mm. I'm going to like this Tabata stuff with like That'd time. So work. hard. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I'm having trouble to walk, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just hoping <laughs> to get over the soreness now. So when I actually go there, it won't be as bad. So, yeah, man. It's the idea. <laughs> yeah. And what, what about the cardio compo component? Because obviously you're not running around on a field or anything, but you still need to have some fitness to last the game so you do you do any specific cardio stuff whether it's like running or biking or is that kind I would of say during, especially during the pre that's also depends where you where you play who's your who's your coach mm. you have some coaches that like to do it and to combine it with the with the volleyball and then you have you're like peppering and pairs and then you have you have to like run and do side steps and like change positions and whatever or you have other coaches that make you work with a medicine ball and with in, in pairs also. And then you have mm -hmm. other guys that make you that, that put you on a bike. Um a running, I would say, is not the most like real cardio. They don't our coach, at least my coaches until now, mm -hmm. they don't they haven't sent me outside to to run around the track. Nice. I know of other guys that, that had to do it. Um but since a lot of my my teammates and myself have like knee problems, we try to avoid the the run like the straight running in, yeah. in circles. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot sense. of times, like now, also during the, we will make like tests. Um, we'll take our bloods. We like all kinds of like strength tests. They will test our cardio, and then yeah. we also have the choice between running and and going on the bike. Yeah. And basically, everyone is going on the bike. <laughs> yes, <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. If you go running, first off, if you're not used to it, if you go running for the first time in a long time, your calves for like one oh, week, you won't yeah, be able man. to move. So I did that once and I regretted it so hard. And <laughs> especially now with my knees also that are not perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm going on the bike every time. Yeah. And yeah. Because, yeah. But at the same time, volleyball is not like, you don't need that crazy aerobic capacity like triathlon. Mm. Mm. Um, it's just kind of stop start explosive stop stuff, start right? stop start and then yeah like you have those interval runs or interval bike bike sprints that we do like 20 seconds work 10 yeah. seconds rest like 10 times in a row and then you have like two three minutes breaks and then you go again and then during those 20 seconds you like sprint as hard as you can 
um that's like one of the of the main ones that i would probably be doing the next couple of weeks um but then during the season and during the the match phase we don't we don't do much cardio it's mostly during the during the preparation phase so now for me and um yeah, but during the season itself, we basically do no cardio work yeah. because you can we can imagine you get so much of it in the game, right? Yeah, like, it, yeah. Especially during the game, and then also during the training, the, the yeah. everyday volleyball practice. Do you hear yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, Louis, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so it's really like it's a busy yeah. street outside. It's, it's not super loud. I could just hear it in the background. Yeah, <laughs> this just distracts me a little bit, but I'm used <laughs> to it, so I I don't check it every time. But yeah, yeah. Uh, no. So no, where was I? Damn it. You're talking about the cardio, but you get enough of it in the game and in the training. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, if we practice for, I don't know, two and a half, three hours, uh, probably more like two, two and a half hours every day yeah. of volleyball. That's a lot. Um, you get it, you get enough. And then during the game, the game is going to last most of the time, like two, around two hours. So, you're yeah. used to it. And then, unless you have a crazy long three or like five set match that lasts three hours, which almost never happens. Mm. Um, you have enough cardio, and then, yeah. yeah, and then during the game, you have the timeouts. Me in my position, I have the rotations as a middle blocker where I sit outside because uh, I'm not at the net all the time. So cardio is not necessarily the most important thing yeah. in, in volleyball. Makes yeah. sense. In terms of the uh, game itself, and you're going to have improved on a lot of aspects, I imagine. So it might be hard to nail it down. But from where you started to where you are now, what do you think are some of the biggest improvements or learnings in the game itself that you've taken on board in that time and how you've improved since you first started? 